Hi, Crystal Balls. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please think about sticking around, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. For everybody else, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. And a special shout out to my Patreons. You guys are amazing. So today we are going to be talking about Lisa Marie Presley. So Lisa Marie, unfortunately, just passed away not that long ago. And I'm coming at a place kind of out of love but also caution because I think there's something very weird happening here if you don't know who Lisa Marie Presley is Lisa Marie was the only living acknowledged biological child of Elvis Presley I said what I said the only acknowledged biological child just keep that um, Lisa Marie is preceded in death by her dad and unfortunately her son, her son passed away, um, approximately two years ago, I believe, um, in a self-inflicted situation. So very sad, very, very sad. So Lisa Marie, the last few times we've seen her, she did not look good at all. She looked either like she was gray in the face, her skin looked clammy. She just did not look like she felt well. So her having a cardiac arrest, which resulted in her death, didn't necessarily seem as a surprise to many people. But to other people, it seems like to be a bit sus around the timing. Lisa Marie Presley was supposed to testify in the Danny Masterson case. And if you don't know about the Danny Masterson case, I may cover it. I don't know yet. But Danny Masterson um, has been accused of SA of three different women. Um, actually, I believe they were underage. And, you know, with when it comes to children, you're guilty until proven innocent in most cases. So, um, Lisa Marie was supposed to testify. Now, this is the point that we don't really know either for or against him. Apparently, the Church of Scientology, yes, the Church of Scientology, because Lisa Marie Presley and Danny Math Masterson are Scientologists, were Scientologists, um, asked Lisa Marie to ask these women who have accused Danny Masterson of S.A., to retract their stories now i don't know if she was going to testify for danny or against him but right now it felt like it was against him and she would have been subpoenaed which means you were forced to go to court now that could have opened up a whole kettle of fish for the church of scientology and that could be something that could have, I don't think it would have brought the church down, but something that could have kept it in courts for years and years and years. Just because Lisa Marie is dead doesn't mean that this is going to stop, but she was one of the key people who were in this case. So unfortunately, now that she's gone, what's going to happen? So we're going to kind of take a look here at Lisa Marie and see what we can come up with. So I think she's patient. She's being patient. She's still around here. She has not crossed over yet. That's something I'm getting very, very clearly. She's around her mother, so she has not crossed over yet. She feels like a hanged man. So she feels like she was set up. She felt like her life was taken too short. And this really could be because she just wanted to live longer. Like she wasn't ready to die. She thought she was going to have a longer life. She thought she was going to live to see her, her twins grow up. Unfortunately, that did not happen. Um, it could mean that she feels robbed, but it also could mean that something nefarious happened. Um, she had a white knight on a horse syndrome. She was always looking for someone to rescue her, um, which took her into some pretty bad territories. So with lovers, with friends, with social life, with church, she really ended up in some pretty dark, nefarious places because of her white night center, because she wanted someone to save her. Um, unfortunately, that happens a lot with people who have had a father pass away or a mother pass away, um, or your parent, whatever your parent is. 
at a young age, they have this white knight syndrome where they're hoping somebody will come and rescue them and fill in the gap in their life that was left by their late parent. Um, the King of Cups. Well, we know that Elvis was the king of rock and roll. And I think he was forever frozen in her mind as like the four year old. And she didn't have very many memories of her dad, which is really, really sad. Now they are together, sort of. He's waiting for her. He's waiting for her. She was stinking rich. She didn't, was rich from the time that she could basically crawl. And this really affected her life too, that she was given everything she wanted on a silver platter. And it made her observation of the world askew, which is telling me she didn't necessarily know the difference between right and wrong. And not in the way that you or I would know the differences between right and wrong. She felt very alone in this world. Um, even with her mom still alive with her, even though she had children, even though she had partners, um, was married at a few times. She married Michael Jackson. Um, she felt alone, very alone. Now she had a lot of inner strength as you know, kind of chaotic as her life was and how she didn't necessarily have um, a lot of normalcy in her life. She was a strong woman. And I think a lot of people would tell you that, especially after her son died, it is a possibility that she died of a broken heart because losing your child, nobody should ever go through that. She was very religious. Um, she was very into the church. So when I mean religious, she wasn't traditionally religious. She didn't worship a god she worshiped scientology so it was um it's different you know they had auditing and they had things like that like they a traditional church and scientology church are really comparable because it's not like they pray it's not like they um they do give tidings a lot of tidings to their church but um it's stuff that you pay for like classes and things like that so it's it's different than a traditional church where you grow up and you go to church on sunday and you pray and you're only there for like an hour maybe take sunday school class or something like that with scientology it's very much your life um she had her heart broken badly three times so we're gonna go and her dad died her son died and a divorce um, I don't know which divorce was the really heartbreaking one, but probably the one with the father of the twins, um, because of some accusations that were made against him that were completely true. Um, she was meant to have kind of a destructive life. She got into drugs and alcohol. She was already predispositioned to things like alcohol and drugs. Both her parents had taken drugs. Both her parents were you know, not strangers to alcohol, both her parents and, you know, pre help predisposition her to the addictive lifestyle. And she had it. And unfortunately, she um, put that addiction other places. And that included the church and some very bad decisions that she made. Again, was looking for somebody to save her. So she put a lot of energy into the Church of Scientology, but she also put her energy into other people. So when she was in a relationship, she completely disappeared and basically became that person's mime is the way I'm getting, like mimic that person. So when she was married to Michael Jackson, she would mimic what he wanted. She would mimic what she thought he needed. You know, um, was that marriage real? I'm going to ask if that marriage was real. That was so weird. Yeah, it was. Um, two very volatile people being together. I don't necessarily think they were lovers. Do I think they got married? Do I think they loved each other? Yes. I think they loved each other. I think they had things in common. I think El um, Michael Jackson was obsessed with Elvis. I think Michael Jackson was obsessed with himself. 
uh, you could consider Michael Jackson being the Elvis of his age of, you know, the king of pop and um, Elvis being the king of rock and roll. She essentially married her father. Um, but was it a real relationship? Yes and no. Do I think they consummated their relationship? No. Do I think that they were deeply in love and friends? Yes. But not deeply in love, like, I love you so much. Oh, my God. There's, you know, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. I want to be with you. You know, there's a reason their marriage only lasted a few years. So do I think something nefarious happened to Lisa Marie? This is telling me, yes, it's a possibility. Um, now, this is something that she could have inflicted herself. She could have been doing drugs and alcohol at this point and it stopped her heart. You know, that's a possibility. Um, I don't know. I feel like she was stabbed in the back. I feel like this case with Danny Masterson is a lot scarier than what it looks like on the surface. And it is going to be detrimental to people in the church if it goes the way that they're afraid it's going to go, which means that Danny will be found guilty. Therefore the church will have investigations because they'll have to. Um, I feel like she was constantly looking around her back, like checking her back out, making sure that something didn't happen. Something was, somebody wasn't behind her. Um, I think there was a little prick, a little something sent, set, submitted to her little little um prick little prick was submitted to her somehow um and maybe before even the last couple times that we've seen her i feel like something was there was a celebration that was happening and she was there and she got a little prick and got something into her system that um I believe she was cremated, so I don't think, I think, or the, the, the coroner said there was something else to look forward to. Um, if they say there's no drugs and alcohol in her system, I don't believe it. I don't believe it at all. Like, if they say that, then I'm going to be like, oh yeah, there's a real cover up here because I believe there was drugs and alcohol in her system. Um, even though she hasn't crossed over right now, she's trying to find happiness um, she doesn't want to leave her mom. She doesn't want to leave her kids. Um, she is going to face her judgment. So this is not going to be an easy process for Lisa Marie. There is something very real about this case and something that she did or witnessed or was a part of that she's going to have to answer to in the afterlife. And this is something that she can't avoid forever. So even though she's hanging around on this plane and she has not crossed over yet, her judgment day is still coming. So we're going to close up with that um, because I, I feel like that's enough for today about Lisa Marie Presley. But I hope you guys enjoyed this reading. And if you did, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe and maybe click the notification bell. I know a few of you have that. So if you want to keep doing that, great. Um, I want to thank every single one of you for being there for me while I've been out. Um, I am suffering badly from my mental illness and I'm suffering from my lupus. So I'm trying very hard to get back into routine and upload some videos. And I have a requested video about Anna Duggar that I am working on. So I will get that done. So I hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are in this world. Remember every single day is a gift. Use your time wisely. I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.